Hello and welcome to another episode of Interactive Biology TV, where we're making biology fun. My name is Leslie Samuel, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about the deep extrinsic shoulder muscles. The last video, we spoke about the superficial extrinsic shoulder muscles, so now we got to deal with the deep stuff. Uh, so let's get right into it. Those deep muscles are, number one, levator scapulae, rhomboidus ma minor, and rhomboidus major and you might see them called rhomboid minor and rhomboid major so we're going to look at these three muscles first let's look at levator scapulae and um, you can see that here i'm not going to give the detail about all of all of it right now because i want to deal with them together for a specific reason so this muscle that you see here outlined in red is levator scapulae then we have rhomboidus minor and we have rhomboidus major. Once again, levator scapulae, rhomboidus minor, and rhomboidus major. Now these are gonna be really easy to remember the origins, insertions, and the actions because we have a little system for doing so. Let's start with levator scapulae. Um, I want you to remember these numbers, 42, and 24. 4, 2, 2, 4. 4, 2, 2, 4. If you can remember this, you can remember everything that you need to know when it comes to the origins, the insertions, and, their, and the uh, actions. What do I mean? Okay. Here we have uh, the, the spinal column, and you can see we have our cervical vertebra, and then we have our thoracic vertebra and we have how many cervical vertebrae do we have we have seven and then we have 12 thoracic and we we don't even need all 12 for right now but what i want you to remember is four two two four and how that works is very simple we have the first cervical vertebra so c1 c2 c3 and c4 those are going to be the origins for levator scapulae because levator scapulae you can't see it here but when it projects up or from the origins uh, there are actually four tendons it actually splits into four and then you have those four tendons let me draw that in red i'm going to try to draw it here but okay so we have one two three and four so it's splitting in four and what that's going to do is it originates right here on the transverse processes of C1 through C4. Okay, you got that first part, right? C1, 2, 3, and 4. Then we have the next number, 2. What's going to happen is we're going to skip the next two cervical vertebra. And we're going to go down to the next two after that. So we did 1, 2, 3, and 4. We're going to skip 5 and 6. And then C7 and T1, right here, so C7 and T1, that's the, or the origin of rhomboidus minor. All right, so the spinous processes of C7 and T1, those are the origins for rhomboidus minor. And then let's use a different color. Oops, I got rid of the colors. Let's do that again. Okay, so we have... One, two, three, four. We skip two. And then we have, let's do this in red. One, two. So then we have C7 and T1. It's okay that I have to do it again because then you get to repeat it. And then we have, let's do another color, green. Okay, I got it right. The next four, so that's going to be T2, T3, T4, and T5. Those are going to be the origins of rhomboidus major. So, 4, 2, 42, and then flip it around, 24. That gives us the origins. One, one difference is the first four, that's going to be the transverse processes. We skip the next two. And then we have the spinous processes of C7 and T1, and then the spinous processes of C T2 through T5. And that's our origins of these three muscles. Wasn't that easy? 
Well, it's just as easy when it comes to the insertions. How is it just as easy? Here we go. Here we have the spine of the scapula, and this is the base of the spine of the scapula. Levator scapulae is going to it's gonna um, insert on the medial border. All of these are on the medial border, but it's going to be right above the base of the scapula, so superior to the base of the scapula, the medial border of the scapula, above the base of the spine of the scapula. Rhomboidus minor, that is going to insert on the medial border, but right at the base of the spine of the scapula. And then rhomboid major, that's going to be the medial border below the base of the spine of the scapula. So we have above the base of the spine of the scapula, right at the base of the spine of the scapula, and below the base of the spine of the scapula. All of them are going to be right there on the medial border. So what is it going to do? Well, if levator scapulae uh, contracts, what's that going to do? That's going to elevate the scapula. Uh, if rhomboidus minor contracts, what's that going to do? Well, that's going to cause retraction. So it's moving backwards or moving towards the midline. And rhomboid, rhomboidus ma major, that's also going to cause retraction let's do well we'll stick with green since that's what i've been doing that's also going to cause retraction um, depending on how things contract that can also cause rotation of the scapula pretty easy to remember right if it's levator scapulae elevation we and then we have retraction and rotation depending on how these muscles contract so that's pretty much it let's do our quick review so the first muscle, that would be levator scapulae. The origins are going to be the transverse processes of C1 through C4. The insertions are going to be, the insertion is going to be uh, the medial border of the scapula above the spine, above the base of the spine of the scapula. And the action is going to be to elevate the scapula. The next muscle would be rhomboidus minor. The origin would be the, the spinous processes of C7 and T1. The insertion would be the medial border of the scapula at the base of the spine of the scapula. And the action, that's going to cause retraction of the scapula. And then lastly, we have rhomboidus major. The origin is going to be uh, the spinous processes of T2 through T5. The insertion is going to be the medial border below the spine of the scapula. And the action, it's going to cause retraction, and it's also going to cause rotation of the scapula. And when the, the, ro the scapula rotates, I didn't say that in the last video, I mean in the last slide, but it's rotating in a way that's causing the glenoid cavity to be depressed. So it's rotating in that direction. So that's pretty much it for this video. As usual, you want more of this kind of stuff, more videos and more resources to help make biology fun. You know what to do. And if you don't, now you know. Head on over to the website at interactive-biology.com. This is Leslie Samuel. That's all for this video, and I'll see you in the next one.